Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Sego Starcraft back here with game two between ESC Jacko and Liquid Snoot. Speeding it up. Uh, the first game was long. This game is even longer. We're going to do a little bit of spoilers here soon. The link's down below to check out that first game. If you are a Zerg player and you have sh troubles playing with late game Protoss, you should check that out. That was really, really cool play by Snoot. Uh, but now that we can get into this game a little bit, I'm expecting Jacko to try something a little bit different. Akalon Wastes really lets you kind of bulk up a huge army, sit at home, uh, and just, you know, get that huge Colossus Ball that you want to go out there and do damage. But in him doing so, Snoot just kind of took the map, got out that money mix of Swarm Host and Spine Crawler defenses, and essentially was able to just close out the map slowly, even without really ever attacking the Protoss player, just sitting back and defending. And I've got to imagine Jacko doesn't want to have a slow death like that again. So, I'm expecting something a little bit different. Pool before hatch. A little bit too common to get cannon rushed still. Particularly after you're up in a game. If somebody thinks that they're going to struggle against you. And or they're just not going to be able to have that kind of late game ability. They're going to try something funky just to try to mix things up. So we'll see what kind of build Jacko has here. Looks as though maybe it is going to be a cyber expand. I'll probably get that mothership core first. Yes, there it is. Just because with a pool first, you can get out six lings, run them across the map, and sometimes get a deny on that, and then you're just sad. Mothership core should be able to keep things safe. Couple of lings just running around to check the map for anything funky. Fast third base. Probably make a couple more lings or something, maybe to start working on these rocks here. Lings do come in. Looks like you would like to get a scout off. Nice little pro block. But seeing, you know, Cybernetic's core working and the Nexus here, and unless there's some really, really funky quick tech, I wouldn't have really expected anything else too weird. Lots of minerals right now for the Protoss player. Robo. Don't mind the Robo. Looks like we might have another drop action here out of the Protoss player. Thinking that he might go for some sort of a push once again with a... How the hell are they called? Warp ship. Warp prism. Warp prisms. Yes, because they're prisms. Got enough gas just to be able to get himself a speed and is pulled out of that. And just going to be working on getting up a huge macro. Scouting right now. But he isn't going to see much. I don't know if he's going to see that Robo in time. No, he hasn't seen anything of the Robo yet. And without scouting that, it might be difficult to say what the Protoss is going to do. Last game we saw Snoo was able to sneak in a really, really important Overlord that saw the Robo, and then he really went into big production. Right now he's making a ton of lings, even if there is an attack immediate, even if there isn't an attack immediately on the way. Pretty big supply block right now. Generally, if you're going to be scouting with an Overlord, you're going to want to produce one or two more, just because you almost know for certain you're about to be supply blocked. He's got Larva too. A little surprising. There's his Overlord. Maybe this is just Snoo preparing for this kind of timing. This could be a moment where you might go for a bit of like a one base push. Well, two base. The second base isn't really up yet. But just a handful of, you know, Zealots like he did in the first game to put some pressure on. It looks as though we're going to have an Immortal drop here. Again, Zerg that's kind of funky. Lots and lots of blue moving across the map. Won't be able to kill that Stalker off. With the Photon Overcharge, he's not going to stick around. Killing the Stalker is nice. We lost a lot of Zerglings to do so. Rocks are down. Creep is moving now. Hasn't moved Creep between his main and his natural once again. We'll see if that hurts him. Particularly if it's going to be an Immortal Drop. What's going to be really important is his mobility. Particularly of the Queens. Because that's his only anti-air that's going to be able to take down that Warp Prism. Ling's going to come up and pressure the front once that goes away. You can see that even on one player vision. He's going to work on those pylons there. Losing a fair bit of Ling's. His timing looked like a little bit off for that. There we go. One pylon is going to go down. The sentries don't kill Zerglings really fast. Uh, but forcing out a few force fields. That's always helpful. Good chunk of roaches and lings on the map. Snoot just looks like he's expecting some sort of aggression here. Did I miss the warp prism? 
Where'd he go? Oh, there it is. Nice little warping in the third. No upgrades for any of the Zerg units, but the two Immortals with the Micro of the Warp Prison could be pretty good. It's a nice little surround. He's not going to be able to pick up all of this. A lot of... All the shields are gone on those Immortals now. That gets shut down a pretty quick there. How many gateways do we have there? Four, five, six, seven, eight gates. Lair tech is happening. Lots of units with the drones. Looks like all of his units are across the map right now. It's a little risky. Big warp in of zealots. Along with the immortals to take care of the roaches. Obviously the zealots can be there to deal with the mass lings that are currently happening. Queens get destroyed by immortals. That is a lot of lings. Now I'm kind of surprised you would use the time warp there. I mean it's nice to have a recall available just in case this kind of goes sideways. So he's trying to focus down the warp prism here but his queens are all been focused down. So his queens are coming out of his main but this is such a big problem. Dealing with the slow there. Zealots carved through a lot of these links. Nothing but units right now. Queen got a little bit more damage on that warp prism there. Spore crawler moving into position. That's really smart. Had to pull the drones out of the natural. Might get the mothership core of this spore crawler. It actually will. All the zealots are gone now. There's roaches left. But these immortals with some good micro should be able to survive. Pretty good micro so far. War prism still not going down. Roaches off creep in the main, and this is why I generally like connecting my main and natural when I play Zerg, just to have that little bit of extra mobility. Spore Crawler trying to get into a better position. There's no forward pylon at all for the Protoss player, so if he does lose this for whatever reason, it's actually going to be a, a bit of a problem for him here. Another Spore Crawler coming in, another drone pull. Zealot's getting right on top of the roaches here. He focused down the Spore Crawler as well, very smart. Queen's trying to get the attack here on the Warp Prism, but got surrounded entirely. This looks pretty bad for Snoot. He's down in supply. He's losing tons of workers. That's so many Zealots. Oh, he got the Warp Prism, though. He's going to lose all of his Queens once again. He's going to get those drones. So would have been really sick is if he did build a pylon over here to warp in just a handful of Zergling, sorry, Zealots. Just to deal damage at the third. We see another immortal on the way. It looks like he's just going to follow this up with the same thing. Yeah, there's another warp prism in production. Snoot's doing his best to micro against all these zealots. Getting himself into a better position. Queen might go down here, though. That's a little sucky. It'd be nice to keep the queen alive. Creep spread is great. There's the creep tumor for the main. Still more queens in production, more zerglings, trying to drone up. If we look at the units tab, 31 workers to 41. I saw one pro being made there, but it looks as though the Protoss is pretty content with this count. Even though I don't think it would have been effective for him to, to try to fit in there, but if he did get on a forge and a plus one, which had been done by now, Probably would have had a much, much easier time with this. Being able to two-shot the Zerglings would have been fantastic. Because clearly Snoot's not going to be interested in getting his upgrades right away. He's just trying to rebuild his tattered economy. Seeing this War Prism come across again, though, will tell him that he needs to keep building units. And now we have Stalkers as part of this mix with the Zealots. Spore Crawler is going to get chopped to pieces. This is a pretty tough fight once again for the, the Zerg player. Gonna try to deal with there's not as much surface area, but his lings are just gonna get rolled. Is focusing down the warp prism here. Got quite a bit of damage on it. I don't know if this queen's in range. Huge warp in of more zealots. There's the queen. Uh, one hit point left. Hero queen. Hero queen. The roaches are out now, now there's no reinforcements. Once again, there's no forward pylon. There's nothing up here to help this.
26 workers right now for the Zerg player. Another warp prism being made. I'm warping in a bunch of sentries. Could go for sentry block in the main. I don't know if that's going to work. There's not even a lot to kill in the main right now. Looks like that's his plan there. He's got a couple zealots in it at the moment. He's going to use the roaches to try and get some damage in. I don't think there's any photon overcharge. There is not. You can just pull the zerglings back. Yeah, the roaches will outrange most of these units. Immortal is about to finish up. Might as well attack. If it's stuck, make the most of it. Just a zealot warp in, looks like, for the main. Now, unfortunately for the Protoss players, he hasn't gotten into any other attack. He doesn't have any other upgrades. He doesn't have another base looking like it's on the way. Even though the Zerg player is down massively, he is almost up to even on workers. Snoot's tech isn't like super great either. He doesn't have a Hydra Den, doesn't have an Infestation. Nothing else really that good. This Warp Prism is not going to be able to get a ton done. It's interesting to see that Snoot's still just focusing a lot on the attacking units at the moment, getting that Roach speed up. More Queens. He's going to move that Creep, and almost for certain he's going to move into that Swarmost play once again. Keeping right on top of this. Even as an Overseer in here, just in case. Maybe some sort of DT follow-up like we saw in the first game. Can't really get this Warp Prism down at the moment. It's just kind of bouncing around between the bases. We see the Protoss player does finally decide he is going to have to expand. Some Zerglings up here. Check. Creep's already almost... <laughs> it's more than halfway down the map. Warp Prism is essentially not going to be able to get much done in there. The Queens could probably go and start focusing it down a little bit. Hydrodan, more gas, more Overlords. So now if we look at units... Protoss player is still in the lead. Snoot focused a lot on getting out more attacking units rather than trying to get up his economy really fast. Now it looks like, ooh, there's a big pile of drones. Quite a bit of damage on that Warp Prism, but it will get away. A few Hydras in, in play, a little bit of range. This next follow-up attack can be pretty powerful. Plus one will not be finished in time, neither will Blink. So I don't know if he's going to commit just yet. Lots of sentries, three immortals, a pretty good push. This map's really good for sentry immortal just because there's a lot of little chokes you can do that are going to let you get really favorable engagements. So I wouldn't have minded him, you know, taking uh, just his observer, moving across the map, killing that creep off because it's almost certain that what the Zerg player is going to move into is going to require that creep to be more effective. See, so he managed to kill a pylon or something over here. Looks like the War Prism did get cut down. The Zealots will get destroyed. Keep in detection with it. Big pile of Hydras. Just wants to stay safe at this point. Snoot's probably pretty aware that his opponent is likely going to be coming for another push. So he's not in a panic to get out his next level of tech. Just killing the creep. Zerg player doesn't necessarily want to commit into this at the moment. Lots of sentries here. If he loses a lot of his hydras or roaches, he could be in a pretty tough spot. Does look like Colossus tech is in the works. Main base essentially mined out. Natural is going to be gone here in seconds. And his third isn't quite finished yet. So income wise, we're going to see, look at that income disparity right now. Snoot two to three times ahead. He's actually going to recall home. Oh, a little bit of a Zergling run by. Can't really afford to lose this right now. It's really the only income he's going to be able to support. The Zerg player still only on three bases. Doesn't have a huge pile of drones yet. Another bunch coming out. And no fourth. Infestation pit. Looks like those swarm hosts are going to be coming out here pretty soon. Hasn't started any of his upgrades yet. I don't even know if he's got Evo Chambers. No, he doesn't. He hasn't built any of his Evo chambers yet. So more worried about getting out the units, and then he'll be going up into those upgrades soon. Plus one finish for the Protoss. Plus two is going to be a ways off. Blink is done. I don't know if it's going to do him a ton of good right now. His army is pretty much going to move as a big clump behind force fields for the next little bit regardless. 
We'll help him, obviously, if there was a muta transition or if he wanted to be a little bit more nimble in his defense. Blocking off this base, some cannons, just to stop by any small runbys that might cause him grief. Mothership Corps moving with the army. I think this is smart. He's already thinking about his next base. He could have probably taken a little bit of a closer one, which I wouldn't have minded to start mining out one of these bases. This one's going to take... Oh, it's just a phoenix. This one's going to take a lot longer to be able to come down and harass the Zerg player. Creeps on the way. Slowly on the way. Only one queen out there at the front. Enduring locusts. Eight swarm hosts coming out. And this might be another really bad timing for the Protoss players. You'll get here just so these swarm hosts are finished up. Evo Chamber's on the way as well. It looks like that's a timing for Snoot. And he's maxed. Is essentially get out a huge army of Roach Hydra move into Lair Tech uh, with the Infestation Pit and, sorry, Lair Tech went down a while ago, get out the Infestation Pit then go into a whole bunch of Swarm Hosts and get your upgrades going at that time. He's maxed out so his economy can be put more towards the upgrades and the tech. Couple of Spore Crawlers in the front just to deal with any funkiness. Only a couple of Colossus in this army, and Thermal Lance is about to finish up, though. That'll help him out a fair bit. There we go. But he's still not in a great position to necessarily break this. There's a pretty small little ramp to bust down, and there's a great concave right now for the Zerg player. Vipers are out. He's just building up some energy on them right now. Does have the abducts ready. So we'll see if he wishes to pull one of those Colossus back. No, he casts a little bit. There we go. Is he going to get it? Yep, just snakes it down. And the Protoss players are retreating. Now he's got to try to decide what is he going to do. Templar Archives down. The money mix for the Zerg player has arrived. Upgrades on the way. Vipers in place. Swarm hosts going down. Creep is out. At least there is a fourth base down a little bit faster. And you can wall off this part here pretty good. Wouldn't mind seeing a couple of gateways and a couple of cannons just to keep it safe. But we've seen from game one that Snoot really has not tried a lot for those late game Zergling runbys. Instead, just very gradually moving across the map with his maxed army. 2 2 finished up for the Protoss. Hasn't started his plus three yet. Second Robo, so he can get out double Colossus production. I was thinking a little bit more about how the Protoss player could have beaten the Zerg player with this giant money mix. And part of me thinks that going for a really, really powerful Sky Toss might be a better answer. It's, it's very delicate, right? I mean, if you get that really big uh, Tempest and Void Ray mix, it's hard to transition to because the upgrades take so long. But the only thing the Zerg player can really do is get out tons and tons of you know Corruptors and try to Viper pull the Tempests in. Uh, so a mix of high Templars in with that Sky Toss can sometimes work out really, really, really well. Swamp most are already now starting to pressure the other side of the map. Here comes the Great Wall of Snoot once again. Vipers in position. And a bunch of Hydras here. Lots of Hydras. Be able to deal very nicely against any type of uh, really quick Stargate that may happen. We came out with a couple of Void Rays or even some Phoenixes. They could very easily get snagged back and taken out by this big pile of Hydras. About to be 1-1. One, one. Storm's about to finish off. Taking the high ground around the Watchtower might be alright. Be able to get a little bit more shots down onto some of those Locusts. Does really need to start managing this creep. And using force fields to control Locusts isn't necessarily the most cost effective use of that energy. Nice little pull. The Immortals aren't the ones dealing a lot of the damage right now, but they are the ones tanking a lot of the damage right now. Nice pull on the Archon. A lot of frail, frail units right now for the Protoss player in the front here. These Hydras are going to cut through a lot of that army really, really quickly. Get the Mothership Core. It's a nice little snipe. He has some storms available, and he didn't hit those Hydras very well. That event is opportunity to get a little bit more damage in. We can see the supply of the Protoss down a lot. More Swarm Host 2 2 started up, so very soon we're even going to see an upgrade lead out of our Zerg player, even though it's well over the 30 minute mark. 
more bases being taken, more static defenses. Not even really worried about his gas right now. His gas has been sustained all right. It's his minerals that have been holding him back. Not over committing into his worker count as well. Making a lot of static defenses with this. Just keeping the pressure going. There is room for warp prism drops in here though. These spore crawlers are nice. But they're really just designed to deflect any type of rallied, nice snag, any type of rallied War Prism. If he paid attention to and navigated it well, could come in here with a really, really big Zealot Warp and take out this Hive Tech. Maybe even uh, disrupt this play a little bit better. Because right now he's just losing supply against free units essentially from the Zerg player. He's moving into this other base. This is saturated well. This Mothership Core might be well served to be with the army. These guys are so stupid. One stalker just sitting behind the bushes. Let's see if he comes through the bushes and just dies. That'd be really funny. There he goes. He'll come out to say hi and then just get rolled over. See, this is nice. The spine crawlers get pretty shredded by this army, but... What they do manage to do is just delay long enough for the swarm most to get better into position. And this map's way more difficult to deal with. There's not as many lanes of attack. Oh, it looks like something tried to sneak in there. Might have been a warp prism. That gets cleaned up alright. There goes another warp prism. See, these bases are pretty well defended. Very smart by Snoot to just put some of his money into those defenses so he doesn't have to worry about pulling his army out of position. And he's already ready to start attacking this freshly mining base, the Protoss player. More static D. Great spread on the swarm hosts. And even he's got a few static defenses over at this side. There are a lot of Colossus out, but the plus three attack has not even been started. These locusts are all 2 2. And as soon as you're spending storms and force fields on locusts, you're kind of in a losing position. It actually loses a Archon there a little easily. Two immortals on really, really crappy move commands get destroyed. And now that's just a matter of time, essentially, at this point here. It's not like the Terran where you can maybe get down a planetary fortress and keep it repaired. Looks like that gets mopped up pretty easily. Another warp prism gonna try to go to the north. Let's see if he actually gets a good position out of that there. Nice snipes. Uh, oh, that one died in midair. That was kind of sick. Too many Immortals are gone. He's down to four. He's going to kill those rocks off, but that's going to buy him not much time. There's War Prism. Let's keep my... There he goes. I'm going to say I want to keep my eye on that. Those rocks died almost immediately. More Swarm Hosts. 3-3 three, three will be done soon. More Stag Defenses. And then Drones to replace it up to max. Five more Gateways. He wants to go for mass Gateway kind of push. Let's see. Here's the problem with that Move Command attack. There was a nice gap in here if he's paying attention. One of the zealots does drop, but essentially a spine and a queen will deal with that. More double colossus production. Tons of spore crawlers going down. Sometimes it's nice with all these locusts because they just kind of run into each other. Just go put them on hold position as soon as they're in range of something. Like move them up and then hold position and they'll do all the damage they need to. Almost get this Nexus. The next wave should be able to get pretty close, though. As you send him to the south, another one of these guys is going to blunder forward like a total idiot and get destroyed. They sound so crazy when those things get blown up. I like that. That's kind of cute. Just grabbing the Stalker for whatever. Grabs an Archon. He can afford it, right? Like, his bank, it's not huge, but it's starting to go. 3-3 three, is about to finish, and he's still just trading a lot of free units. Not any spines on this side, though. Might be worth getting a few of those. So many as well, most. Sad I messed that one up. I think Jacko had a huge, huge lead in this game. I think two things would have helped out a lot. If he had a pylon over here at the beginning of the game to warp in some zealots over here while he was attacking the main, probably could have won. His warp prism losses there and great clutch queen attacks essentially got Snoot to stabilize. But he was up... At one point, almost double the worker count. 
and still was able to uh, to lose that game. And that's a little disappointing. I think he played well. Just this strategy from Snoot, so exciting to watch. Thanks, everybody, for watching Seiko StarCraft. Hope you liked that, and we'll talk with everybody later.